all in favor of electing assembly member anthony rendon as the 70th speaker of the california state assembly please signify by saying aye, aye. i never envisioned myself being speaker of the assembly i never envisioned myself uh, being a member of the assembly I'm, I'm fairly certain there was a point late in my life uh, where i wasn't really sure what you know the, the assembly actually was I grew up primarily in Montebello and in Whittier, uh, very working class communities. My dad always worked a full-time job and one or two part-time jobs. He always had a weekend job and uh, a job at night. My mom, who had four kids, she was at home taking care of us. Around junior high, she went to the local uh, Catholic uh, elementary school to be a, a teacher's aide. So it was a very working class background. The neighborhood is a suburban neighborhood, predominantly Latino. There's also communities where the need was greatest, and obviously there was something about those communities that resonated with, uh, with my personal story, with my family. The immigrant experience is something that I recognized in, in our own family background as well. It was always interesting around Christmas time in East LA to drive around and to see how people's front yards are decorated. It was interesting to go to cemeteries and see how incredibly ornately the graves uh, in, in Latino cemeteries tend to be. For somebody who likes community, um, but who also who likes art, it was, I found it fascinating. You know, I go to a, a coffee shop in the district and the owner has this little sort of credo up on the wall and he says, you know, you know we're, we're Mexican so we we love Frida Kahlo and we love soccer and we love blah, 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 but we all grew up here, so we love the Brady Bunch and we love the Dodgers and all that kind of stuff too. So, I mean, there was always this sort of combination of um, being a part of a subculture within, uh, within you know, within and amongst uh, another culture. There's a movie called The Wonderful Ice Cream Suit. There's this guy who has this white suit. He's like shy and he can't talk to anybody. And he puts the suit on and feels smart and cool. And then there's this one scene where he puts on the ice cream suit. He lives in East LA and he puts on the ice cream suit and he's able to walk across the Seventh Street Bridge into downtown. And downtown signifies commerce, professionalism, suits, all that. And I think it speaks a lot about the sort of invisible, invisible barriers that exist in, in our community, but also I think in immigrant communities in general. I was not a very good student. I uh, didn't have much of an academic background and I realized I needed to do something different. I never thought I'd graduate from college and then you graduate from college and you think, oh, that wasn't, wasn't so hard. And then you get sort of a professional job and you think, oh, I can do that too. And I can pay my own rent and I can even go to graduate school. But you can, there's all these sort of steps that build confidence. I had an older sister who did everything before I did. She went to college first. She went traveling internationally first. Um, she had a professional job first. And in looking at her, I always thought, you know, it's, it's within the realm of possibility. I think those role models uh, allow those things to happen. This location is meaningful to me. It's in downtown Los Angeles. Lived here for about a decade. This building is filled with artists, and we'd come up here and talk about art. Sometimes they'd project some of their video pieces on these walls, which was a lot of fun. The building was filled with LA Times writers uh, and editors and reporters, and we'd come up here and we'd have a conversation about the arts, we'd have conversations about the city. So I had a lot of incredible conversations here and uh, really sort of, I think it expanded my horizons to, to a large extent. I very much considered myself an activist, particularly around issues uh, involving early childhood education, uh, issues around criminal justice reform, also first-time offender, at-risk youth, gang prevention programs in East Los Angeles. You know, I grew up in those communities, so I think I shared a lot of the similar expectations, similar worldviews as the, as the folks who grew up in those communities. Uh, I think our, our 
whatever shared experiences we had um, caused me to, to end up being who I am. I've been reading different histories of California and that really begins to resonate when you do all that reading and then step foot on the floor you realize how privileged you are and how in some ways how incredibly um, impossible it all seems. My route was a long one and an arduous one, but it was one that I know other people can achieve.